This president is the single worst negotiator we have had in the White House in my lifetime, who has basically given the Cuban government everything it asked for and received no assurances of any advances in democracy and freedom in return. Marco Rubio letting her rip at the president's decision to make nice with Cuba. Like Rubio, Ted Cruz also has Cuban roots. No fan of this deal. First, he is the Chief here. White House correspondent Ed Henry on how the White House is responding to all of this. Hey, Ed. Well, Neil, good to see you. They are trying to jump on this. This is the president obviously in desperate need of some legacy items. He's had trouble spots, problems all around the world. So they greeted this uh, jubilantly today here at the White House when Alan Gross, this American aid worker, was finally uh, freed. Uh, but you see critics, as you noted, Marco Rubio, but also Democrats like Bob Menendez who were saying uh, there was a high price here in terms of swapping uh, three Cuban spies. Uh, the White House insists that was not a direct swap. Uh, I'll get into that detail in a minute. That photo you're seeing is the President of the United States yesterday, for the first time in decades, an American president having a phone call with the Cuban president. He spoke to the dictator, Raul Castro. The president insists uh, that some five decades of U.S. policy has failed to isolate Cuba, has just hurt the Cuban people. But again, even some Democrats, like Bob Menendez in the president's party, are saying the president is dangerously misunderstanding the situation. Listen. To those who oppose the steps I'm announcing today, let me say that I respect your passion and share your commitment to liberty and democracy. The question is how we uphold that commitment. I do not believe we can keep doing the same thing for over five decades and expect a different result. I believe that it is misguided and fails to understand the nature of the regime in Cuba that has exerted its authoritarian control over the Cuban people for 55 years. No one wishes that the reality in Cuba was more different than the Cuban people and the Cuban American community that has fled the island in search of freedom. Now, I mentioned that the White House is rejecting this idea that Alan Gross, the American aid worker, had been in prison in Cuba for some five years, was directly swapped for these three Cuban spies. What the White House is claiming is the swap was actually between three Cuban spies that America released and then an, an intelligence asset in a Cuban prison that was helpful to the United States was released by the Castro regime. That was a swap separate from the humanitarian release of Alan Gross. But let's face it, all of this was happening as part of one deal between the Cuban president and the American president, no matter how they slice it out. Also adding to the intrigue, uh, the president says uh, that it was Pope Francis who really pushed this uh, in a private meeting with the president some months ago at the Vatican and then followed up with separate letters uh, to both President Castro as well as President Obama to move this along. Neil? Ed Henry, thank you very, very much. All right, to you. Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz, whose own father fled Cuba. What does he make of this? Uh, Senator, very good to see you. Your thoughts? Neil, it's always good to be with you. You know, this is yet another manifestation of the failures of the obama clinton Kerry foreign policy. Uh, for, si for six years, we, we followed the pattern of alienating and abandoning our friends and allies, and, and at the same time, coddling up to and appeasing those who are enemies of this country. And it's a consistent pattern. First, it was Russia, then it was Iran, now it's Cuba. This announcement today will be remembered as a tragic mistake. You know, Cuba was struggling. It was gasping. Uh, gasping for air. It has been relying on Venezuela with oil prices cratering. Venezuela is hurting economically and just like the administration did with Iran, right when the administration was feeling the maximum pain, it throws them an economic lifeline and continues the brutal repression and dictatorship of the Castro brothers. Well, you know, Senator, there are a lot of folks who look at it on both sides and say, well, what is 60 years of this wrought? Well, what it has wrought is, is limiting the impact and harm of Cuba. There is a difference between countries that are friends, that are our allies, that are our trading partners. In Cuba, the Cuban government controls all of the money that comes in. If you bring money into the country, you have to transfer it into Cuban pesos, which enriches and empowers the dictatorship. It's also 90 miles away. Look, Cuba is an ally of North Korea. It is an ally of Iran, it is an ally of Venezuela, it is an avowed enemy of this country. You know, it was striking, the president's remarks, 
He talked about the Bay of Pigs invasion, but somehow completely omitted the Cuban Missile Crisis, somehow completely omitted an incredible threat to U.S. national security with nuclear weapons that were almost 90 miles off our shore. And, and, and it, was, it was sad to see both the president and John Kerry essentially blame America first, blame America for the relationships, the relation between the United States and Cuba. Look, the Castros are the ones who have decided to be brutal, repressive dictators. And, and we should not be taking, taking blame for the fact that we responded to their active acts of war and hostility. They are a leading state sponsor of terrorism. And, and just like President Obama did with Russia, just like President Obama did with Iran, he does not understand the difference between our friends and our enemies. Does it bother you that you're on the opposite side of the Pope on this one? Well, look, the, 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 there have been public re reports to that effect. I certainly re respect the Pope in his sphere of influence, but I will say this, when it comes to foreign policy and the national security interest of the United States, the president should be focused on exactly that, on protecting our national security interest. And, and this doesn't do that. You know, this is also reminiscent of the lousy deal that President Obama negotiated concerning Bo Bergdahl, where we released five Taliban terrorists. You know, likewise here, the president has now released three Cuban spies who were guilty of murdering four American citizens, of spying on Southern Command, on spying on our military bases, and, and that undermines national security. Now, now listen, we do have reason to celebrate. We should celebrate, we should give thanks for the release of Alan Gross. Alan Gross's imprisonment was tragic, it was wrong, it, it was a manifestation of the barbarity and, and oppression of this regime, and that is, is reason to celebrate he is coming back, but we should have sought his release from a position of strength, not weakness, particularly because Cuba is dependent on Venezuela, and Maduro in Venezuela is essentially a petrotyrant, and with oil prices falling, suddenly Venezuela is in economic chaos, even more so than they were before. Cuba is economically vulnerable right now, even beyond so the disaster. What would you do, Senator, now? I mean, the president has acted unilaterally on this. Uh, apparently, this, he pulled a surprise. No one even knew this was coming. So what do you do? I mean, he wants to normalize this one, lift embargo. Eventually, you get all that and make it in the past. What are you going to do? Well, I, I've been encouraged to see bipartisan condemnation uh, of this bad deal. I was encouraged in particular to see my colleagues in the Senate, both Senator Rubio and Senator Menendez, a Republican and a Democrat, they like I of Cuban-American descent, all in, in unison condemn this as a bad, bad deal. And, and I've got to say, Neil, the pattern of bad deals is what we expect from this administration. You know, when, when President Obama first entered the White House, one of the first things he did was canceled the anti-ballistic missile batteries that were scheduled to go into Poland and the Czech Republic in an effort to appease Putin. Now, we've seen that appeasement didn't work as Putin's soldiers marched into Ukraine and invaded a sovereign nation. What do you think he's Likewise, up to then? What do you think he's up to then? With all these latest moves, post the midterms, whether it's on illegal immigration and the freeze deportations for millions, right. uh, or even the, the, the things he's, he, he's advancing right now on Keystone and all the, uh, that's going on his own and never opened the thing, what have you, that he's taken a hard turn to, to act unilaterally in one event after another. What, what, what do you think is happening? Listen, there's no doubt that this is a unilateral president who, who is exhibiting right now anger and defiance towards the American people. He is angry at this last election. He's angry at the tidal wave that retired Harry Reid, and he's acting in defiance of that. But, but it is also, you know, I'm reminded of what, what Ronald Reagan said about the hard left. He said, it's not what they don't know. It's that so much of what they know just isn't so. President Obama pioneered what he calls the foreign policy of leading from behind. And what that has meant is we haven't stood with our allies. We didn't stand with Ukraine, an ally that we had treaty commitments with when they were invaded by Russia. We have been, this administration has been the most antagonistic in history 
to the nation of Israel, a strong ally. Indeed, just a couple of weeks ago, there were reports the White House was considering sanctioning our friend and ally, the nation of Israel. That's wrong. We should be standing with our friends. But the flip side of it is this president believes appeasement works. So when it comes to dealing with tyrants and bullies, whether, whether it is Putin, whether it is Khomeini in Iran, or whether, whether it is the Castros in Cuba, he believes that, that, that a position of weakness is how we should negotiate, and that doesn't work. I believe in peace through strength. I think that's where most Americans are. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention presidential politics, Senator. As you might hear that Jeb Bush is, is seriously considering a potential run for the White House. I still don't understand the statement, but I think it might have been meant to ward off the money backers who might wander somewhere else, maybe to you. Um, what do you think of that? Well, look, I think Jeb Bush is, is a good man. I, I think he was a good governor of the state of Florida. Um, he's going to have to make a decision whether or not he runs for president in 2016. He's obviously considering it, and we'll presumably find out in the next several months. Uh, in my view, Republicans should nominate whoever's standing up and leading, whoever is taking on the great challenges of the day, whoever is standing up for free market principles, standing up and making the case that the Obama economy isn't working, it's a disaster, millions of working men and women are hurting, whoever's making the case that Obamacare is a train wreck and we can do better, who's ever standing up and defending our constitutional rights that are under assault from Washington, whoever's standing up and defending rule of law, and as this issue de demonstrates today, whoever is standing up and, and championing, restoring America's leadership in the Does world, getting back that those to peace big money strength. backers and the Ken Langones are drawn to the Chris Christie's or they're drawn to the Jeb Bushes or the Mitt Romney's, uh, not to you. Well, look, Neil, we're, we're going to have a robust debate in this country about the right direction and how we turn the country around. Y you, know, you know, I will say that, that every one of us should learn uh, from, from what has worked and what hasn't. And, and you know, there's this small cabal of consultants in Washington who keep running national campaigns and they keep losing. They keep losing over and over again and they go back to the same donors and they say cut us checks to make the same mistakes. What we're doing isn't working and Neil what seems clear to me is if we nominate another candidate in the mold of a Bob Dole or a John McCain or right. a Mitt Romney and let me be clear all three of them are good honorable principled men but it isn't working and if we do it again the same voters who stayed home in 08 and 12 will stay home in 16, and Hillary Clinton's the next president, and that okay. would do irreparable damage to the country. All right, Senator, uh, thank you very, very much.